Hi, everybody. My name is Jose Prado with Memon Survival, and I wanted to bring you the news about what's going on with China, you know, with the whole new virus thing. And I don't know about you, but every time I hear about a new virus, this is what I think about. So that that's just me. When whenever I think of a new virus that came out of nowhere and nobody knows what it is, that's what I think about it. And let's get let's get started with the headlines, all right? It says the mysterious new SARS-like virus that is killing people in China has now spread to Japan. This is from the economiccollapseblog.com. On top of everything else that has happened so far in 2020, a very mysterious SARS-like virus that doctors have never seen before, <laughs> causing grave concerns among global health officials. It has been identified as a coronavirus, not the corona, you know, that kind we like to drink, but that's the, the name of this vi uh, vir family virus. Anyways, but that category covers a very broad range of illnesses. If you have a common cold right now, it was caused by a coronavirus. So you already have a corona, if you know, if you have a flu or a cold. But SARS and MERS also come from the same virus family. And those two outbreaks made headlines all over the world. In 2002 and 2003, SARS infected more than 8,000 people worldwide and more than 700 of them ended up dying. Global health officials are hoping that what we are now facing won't be any worse than that. But at this point, they just don't know enough about it, about this mysterious new virus to make any firm projections. And that is true. Um, you know, it's it's new. It originated in, in China. And they don't know what to do with it yet. But they do know it's kind of like the flu or, you know, cold symptoms. All right. What we do know is that the outbreak just started. And China has announced that the virus has claimed a second life. And we also know that there has been at least two cases where people have transported the virus outside of China via airplane. The first case happened earlier this week when a woman flew from China to Th Thailand. Recently, officials reported the, the first exported case of virus in Thailand. In that case, a resident of Wuhan, got on direct flight to Thailand along with several members of her family and a tour group, according to WHO, which is the World Health Organization. When the 61-year-old arrived at the airport, she was found to have fever and she was taken to the hospital where she was tested positive for 2019-NCOV. That's the, the code name for, for this illness. And that that really sucks because obviously she is inside an airplane, thousands and tons of feet in the air, and now all those people, or most of the people in the airplane, are infected. Subsequent, uh, subsequently, at thir uh, on Thursday, we learned that a man flew from China to Japan and also contracted the virus. So now it's in two places. Bill Gates has identified pandemics as one of the three greatest threats that humanity is facing. And he says that we are wolf woefully unprepared for one war to uh, break out today. Well, I got to say that again. Bill Gates has identified pandemics as one of the three greatest threats that humanity is facing. And he says that we are woefully unprepared if one were to break out today. And that, you know, he, he has been in the health industry i guess or the big pharma scope here in the past few years you know being overseas and and trying to come with new vaccines and medicines and stuff a lot of people call it evil a lot of people call it good but that's up to you to decide in the case of biological threats this is from bill gates that sense of urgency is lacking 
Gates said in a 2018 presentation hosted by the New England Journal of Medicine, the world needs to prepare for pandemics the same serious way it prepares for wars, and that is very true. Sadly, authorities will probably never make preparations a truly priority until a major pandemic has already begun. The symptoms of this new virus include congestion, headache, cough, and fever. Of course, those exact symptoms are associated with common cold. If you have shortness of breath, chills, or body aches, in addition to other symptoms, that could be an indication that you should get checked out. And of course, it's not an issue right now in the United States, you know, and what's today? Um, I think today is January 22nd? Yeah, 22nd. But anyways, the point is that right now it's not that big of an issue, but you do have to be ready and be prepared and, you know, have that in mind, especially in the bigger cities. As we heard already, that it has landed in Washington state. All right, China says no need to panic as daily virus goes international. This from Breitbart.com. And <laughs> for this piece, I have this uh, clip from the movie 2012. The governor just said we're fine now. The guy's an actor, he's reading a script. When they tell you not to panic, that's when you run. Okay, could you call me back? All right, like the guy say in the movie, when they tell you not to panic, that's when you run. Chinese officials have state, uh, Chinese officials and state media insist on Monday, uh, the emergency of a previously unknown respiratory virus affects hundreds and believed to have killed three people so far. Uh, there's no need to panic. Okay, hold on. Affecting and believed to have killed three people so far presented no need to panic and that the virus was not spreading significantly significantly within China. Those affected by the virus exhibit acute respir respiratory infection symptoms and many other and many have developed severe pneumonia. The viral impact on the lungs suggests that it is airborne, you know, with coughing and all that stuff. So if you go anywhere and people are coughing around you, you better cover up. Chinese author authorities urge individuals to wear masks to stop it from spreading. And yes, that's that's the first line of defense. You know, you wear a mask, you put some gloves on, and that way you can, one, prevent from catching it, and two, spreading it. The government of Hong Kong made face masks illegal last year in response to anti-communist protests. The region's top court decreed that the ban unconstitutional, but some police, police still attempt to enforce it. And, you know, this is when these kind of rules are kind of stupid in a way because you got to fight, you know, you got you to gotta try to keep this contained, but you make my face mask illegal. I mean, you got to... You got to think that there should be some kind of uh when there's a pandemic, you can wear them kind of claw or cloth or law or something in it. Officials said the virus likely originated in the seafood market in Wuhan, a central Chinese city of 11 million people. According to the CDC, some of those diagnosed uh, with carrying the virus now identifies <coughs> Now identified as a new mutation of coronavirus, had no contact with the seafood market in question, suggesting the virus may spread from person to person, not just animal to person. <laughs> Authorities in the region have implemented screening checks at airports and other ports of entry, and local government areas like Hong Kong expanded police power to quarantine suspected patients. What about the animals? I mean, you just said it's from animal to person. Or not just from animal to person. <laughs> so how do you know if your dog has, you know, the coronavirus? This new thing. And see, this is... Now, we're going to move to the next article. Then this is why I say that it's... When they say do not panic, that's when you run. Killer, bu killer bug coronavirus death toll doubles... To 17 as more than 470 cases of mutating bug confirmed this from the sun you know in uk all right <clears throat> so 
we went from don't panic and this this is uh this is like a three three day old illness that they started you know um reporting on it and in just three days it already killed 17 people it went from two to six now to 17 and more than 470 cases of mutating so it's re um it's mutating other people so it's making it worse and worse you know kind of like the flu the flu also mutates and gets a new strain of the flu and all that good stuff so this is what's essentially happening here the virus could declare a global health crisis today after the case of mystery book increased from 300 in one day i mean of course if somebody in in the city of 11 million people one person there got sick more than that more, more than those are going to be and at this point there's 10 countries that have it okay right up of the top of my head i forgot to write it down it was china japan thailand um united states australia hmm, mexico and probably the uk but anyways the point is that there's you know it already spreading i'm gonna insert a picture now that I forgot to write it down on how many how many people have it. Um, okay, so anyways, it comes as British experts said that uh, up to 10,000 people could already be infected amid fears of the death rate in currently the same as Spanish flu epidemic, which killed millions after World War One. The WHO is holding an emergency committee meeting in Genova today to determine if the outbreak should be classified as global crisis like the West African Ebola outbreak in 2014 or 2015. And I don't know if you know, but the Ebola never went away. It just stopped being reported on, kind of like this is going to be. People are going to forget about it and it's going to be gone. I know I've seen reports of people who are crossing the border you know, they have been tested positive for Ebola and then, you know, they disappear. I don't know if they put them in quarantine or what they do with them. But the point is that it's still out there. We do know that over there in Africa, people are still infected with it and they're still suffering for the, uh, from that uh, disease. And it's very unfortunate. But uh, so let's hope that they find something soon if they haven't already and they'll give it out. You know, Bill Gates has enough money to be able to do that. British experts uh, have today warned the true number of cases is more likely to the range from 1,000 to 10,000. But disease modeling experts from the Imperial College, London, said that the true figure in the city of Wuhan alone, the source of the outbreak, could be 4,000 and as high as 9,700 in the worst case scenario. But yeah, let's go with the worst case scenario. They they went in three days. We went from two three people uh, unconfirmed cases. You know, four hundred and what was it? Four hundred and seventy. Mm, well, I had it. Oh yeah, there we go. Four hundred and seventy mutating bug confirmed to ten thousand cases. You know. Uh, Professor Neil Ferguson, an expert in mathematical biology at Imperial College London, told reporters in London the death rate of the new strain of coronavirus is roughly the same as the Spanish flu epidemic at around 1 in 50. Now, that's a lot of people. 1 in 50 and we already have, what, uh, 10,000? You do the math on that one. The major of Wuhan confirmed yesterday that it, that an 89-year-old woman, excuse me, an 89-year-old man from the city had become the fourth victim. A 66-year-old man known as Lee, and a woman 48, known as Yin War, also confirmed to have died from the multiple organ failures. Okay, so this thing is getting worse and worse. In more, in more severe cases, 
It has caused pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, and even death, or all of the above. Okay, and we do see that it's that older people, you know, as any other illness, they are more likely to get sick. And, you know, the 48-year-old woman, I mean, you know, she's not old, you know, but she still contracted it and unfortunately passed away. So, I'm going to put a picture of um, of how they're describing, you know, how... Um, it spreads and how it begins and all the symptoms and stuff here in just a second. Now, you may be wondering, how in the world can I prepare for this, right? I mean, this is why it's the Man Man Survival Show, because we not only tell you the, the news that, you know, that are related to survival, but we give you the answers as best as we possibly can. Okay, so how to prepare before you get sick, you know, or if let's say like there was one case confirmed, that would be for me, that would be enough to start wearing face mask and gloves in public. You know, avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth. Have an adequate supply of tissue, soap, paper towels, alcohol based hand rubs and disposable wipes. <clears throat> and you should practice that and your family. Too. You know, that should be part of your preparedness plan or your preparedness protocol that when something like this happens, it doesn't matter if it's so far away, you should still practice it like this, okay? Because face mask will, you know, reduce the chances of you breathing something in because it is, it is airborne. People are coughing it, you know, and it's staying in the air. The animals, too, are catching it. So, uh the gloves, you know, because you gotta be touching stuff. You gotta be if you if you're in a big city, excuse me, with 11 million people, you're gonna be touching a lot of dirty surfaces. So you must uh, use gloves and face mask and gloves nowadays. They're not expensive at all. A big box of gloves, I think it's 200 in it. It's like five to ten bucks. So that's not a lot. And if I'm not mistaken, the face masks are a lot cheaper than that, and it comes with a whole bunch of them too. Uh, now, nowadays there's rubbing alcohol or not rubbing, well, yeah, um, hand sanitizer. That's what I'm thinking about. You know, there's about yay big and you can use it all throughout the day. Now, if you do get sick, stay home and sick, you know, if all possible, if you're not going to get fired. But then again, you know, don't die because they'll replace you just as quick. So stay home when sick, cover coughs and sneezes with tissue, wash your hands often and clean frequently touched surfaces and objects because that way you can pass it on to other people within your family or at work or wherever you may be. Use face mask when sick and in close contact with other people. Keep children from uh, child care facilities and schools. Increase the space between you and people and decrease the frequency of contact with other people. You know, and essentially you want to quarantine yourself because for one, you don't want your loved ones to get sick. And two, you don't want to spread it to other people, you know, be part of the the apocalypse problem. So those are the best ways to prepare for something like that. Okay. Um, will World War C type scenario will ever come along? We never know. Maybe, you know, the government does experiment with a lot of biological weapons. And they might have one of those. Maybe other countries like Russia, China, or someone rogue like the, the uh, Iranians or just you know terrorists in general or just you know cartels anybody you know they they play with those kind of stuff so the point is besides the fact that you know you need to have water food you know food water you know stuff to be able to bug out uh if it if it doesn't get that bad you know if which probably won't where you have to evacuate our entire city like they did in um, uh, I Am Legend, you know, they evacuated the entire New York. I mean, we, if we don't think something that may happen, maybe will someday, I don't know, which is important why you need preparations. And your preparations will also include a bug out location, right? So preferably not within the same state that you live in, you know, always about a full tank of gas away or, you know, halfway, depending on where you live. 
because if you live in Texas and you live all, all the way to the bottom near to Mexico, then that's going to be a long drive getting out of there. But the point is to study your area, okay? And then you can plan ahead with your family, sit down and make the best of it, you know, get them involved. That would be the best, the best way to do it. So again, my name is Jose Prado with Memon Survival, and we encourage you to prepare for whatever life may throw at us. Right now, it's a virus. Past few days have been volcanoes. You know, uh, we almost won a war with Iran. I mean, there's a lot of things, and it's only been a month or not even a whole month into 2020 yet. So the point is, let's get ready for whatever may happen. Also, please like and share this video. You know, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. We'll answer as best as we can. Uh, please go on Facebook. We're on there too. We're on, on social media. Uh, you know, we're also on uh, Instagram. We're on there too. So please help us grow. Um, we're trying to give you the best information and give you the... Uh, the best way you can prepare for anything like that that may happen in life, you know. It's only 20 days in 2020, and a lot of things are happening. It may get worse. It may get better. We don't know. But you always want to be ready. And we're trying to help everyone get prepared. So please help us grow. We'll greatly appreciate it. Have a great day.